Hello, welcome to Accounting with Mr. H. In this video, we are going to look at marginal costing and specifically how marginal costing is useful in decision making situations, um, such as how to make optimum use of scarce resources. Please do remember to subscribe to the channel, like, share and comment on the videos. Let me know what you find useful and what you'd like to see in future videos. OK, let's get on with a question then. So the topic, as I say, is optimum use of scarce resources. If we just break that down a little bit. So optimum, the word optimum, we're talking about best. So the, the most effective use um, of something. And then the word scarce, we mean something that's limited in nature. And resources, that could be labour hours, the amount of workers you've got. It could be machine hours. Uh, maybe one of your uh, machines in the business has broken down or uh, there's been a fire in a factory that's going to take several months to, uh, to fix. So there are situations or there can be situations where a business, for one reason or another, maybe industrial action like strike action, as I say, maybe a fire. But for some reason, one or more of their resources is limited in number. And what we're trying to look at is how can a business make best use of the resources that they've got in order to maximise their profit? So here we go then. Let's look at the left hand side. Snoozy Limited makes three types of mattress. They make the deluxe, the comfort and the standard. The following information is available per mattress. I can see in that table there they have told me the selling price of each mattress the cost of direct materials used to make each mattress, how many hours of direct labour are needed, and the annual demand. So that's going to be their, their expected sales level, uh, how many units of each mattress they would expect to sell. They've also told me the workers are paid £18 per hour, and the fixed overheads are £950,000 per annum per year. And then it says, due to a national shortage in skilled labour, only 32,000 labour hours are available. So there then is my scarce resource, or sometimes known as my limiting factor, my limited resource. They've only got 32,000 labour hours. And the question asks us, prepare a contribution statement showing the maximum profit achievable given the limited labour hours available. So the secret to this, like most marginal costing uh, decision making, is to consider the contribution and hopefully you know that the formula for contribution per unit is the selling price per unit take away the variable or it can be the direct costs per unit and so on the right hand side uh, you'll see i've got my layout ready i have put a, a, a quick title so snoozy limited is going to be a contribution statement uh, with 32,000 labor hours and then my first column is going to be where i write my narratives and then I've simply got a column for each of the different products, in this case, mattresses that the company uh, manufactures, the deluxe comfort and the standard. And as I say, it's all about contribution. So the first thing I'm going to do is find, calculate the contribution per unit, per mattress. So I'm going to start with the selling price. Let's get uh, some things written in here. Here we go. And they've given me these so I can simply put them in. So the deluxe sells for £430. Comfort 350, the standard 220. And then I'm going to list any costs, um, variable costs or direct costs, costs that change in proportion to the amount of um, units being produced or costs which are directly associated with the actual manufacturer. So they've given me the direct materials. So that's probably things like the cotton and the springs and whatever else goes into a mattress. So I can put those straight in. So the direct materials to make a deluxe is £210 per mattress. Uh, comfort 140 the standard 100 We've also got some direct labour. So this is obviously another direct cost. These are the workers then that are, are hands-on, if you like, making involved in the manufacture of each mattress. And they've told me to make a deluxe, it takes four hours of direct labour. But I need to have the figure in pounds. And I can see underneath the table, uh, they said the workers are paid £18 per hour. So my next row is going to be direct labour. And I just need some simple uh, workings as I go along. So to make the deluxe, as we say, 
it takes four hours, four labour hours, £18 an hour they get paid. So in pounds, the amount, the labour cost to make a deluxe is £72. And now I can put that into my uh, statement. Do the same with the comfort. Uh, this one, three and a half hours it takes to make a comfort. So three and a half times 18 is £63. And then the standard takes two and a half hours. So two and a half hours at £18 an hour is going to cost £45. And then in this question, there are no other direct costs. Always look out. Sometimes it might say other direct costs, other variable costs. So anything that is direct or variable needs to be included here. Then I'm going to subtract the costs that I've just put in. So the direct materials and the direct labour from the selling price. And that's going to give me the contribution per unit. So let's see what that's going to do. OK, we can see the deluxe then. So £430, take away 210 and take away 72 means a deluxe generates £148 of contribution per unit. Comfort 350, take away 114.63 is £147. And then the standard 220, take away 145 equals £75. Now, if you think about where we started this video, we said the point of this is to find out how the business can maximise the profit that they make if they've got a limited resource, in this case, labour hours. At first glance, it might look like, well, the deluxe makes the most contribution per unit. So surely it would make sense to make a, start by making all the deluxes with the labour hours we've got. But where the slight twist is in this topic, We've got to remember that different mattresses take different amount of hours to make. So when you're working out um, the optimum use of scarce resources, you start by finding the contribution per unit like we've just done. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at whatever the scarce resources, what the limiting factor is, in this case, labour hours. And you'll see I've added another row there, labour hours per unit. In a different question, that could be machine hours, for example, it could be materials in kilograms. Maybe the material is limited. Maybe they have, can't get enough supply of something. So whatever it is that's limited, I'm going to um, look at now. And so the labour hours are the limiting factor, the scarce resource. And I'm just going to write in here the details. So we know to make a deluxe, it's four hours of labour, a comfort three and a half and a standard two and a half. And then what I'm going to do is now work out the contribution per labour hour. Or in other words, the contribution per unit of scarce resource. So in this question, it's contribution per labour hour. If the thing that was scarce was machine hours, it would be contribution per machine hour. If it was a business that used uh, metres of material, well, it would be the contribution per metre of material. So whatever the factor is, whatever the resource is that's scarce, so if I look at the deluxe, we've already calculated that the contribution per unit of a deluxe is £148. But we need four of these very of these precious labour hours. Remember, we haven't got many of them. So these precious labour hours, we're going to need four of them to, in order to generate that £148 of contribution. So all I'm going to do is divide 148 by four, and that's going to tell me that the, the deluxe mattress will generate a contribution per labour hour of £37. I'm going to do the same for the comfort. So the contribution per unit of comfort is 147, but I need three and a half hours to generate that 147. So 147 divided by three and a half is £42. So per labour hour, the comfort generates or will generate a contribution of £42. And then finally, do the same with the standard. So the contribution per unit is 75, but divide by two and a half labour hours. So the standard will generate a contribution per labour hour of £30. And now I can see this has changed things slightly because when, when we looked at the contribution per unit, we could clearly see that the deluxe generated the most contribution per unit, 148 compared to 147 on the comfort and the 75 on the standard. But now, when we look at it per labour hour, we can see that actually the comfort is the best one to make first with the labour hours that we've got. Because per labour hour, the comfort generates £42 compared to 37 with the deluxe and 30 with the standard. 
So once I've got the contribution per scarce resource per unit of limiting factor, in this case, labor hours, I'm then going to rank order them. So the best thing to make first, because we want to maximize the contribution in order to then maximize the profit. So I'm going to start by making comfort. Then if I've got any labor hours left, I'm going to make deluxe. And then if I've got any labor hours left, I'm going to make standard. And that's going to enable me to use these 32,000 labor hours that we've got in the most optimum, the best way possible in order to maximize the contribution I can get. Or basically, to put another way, to get as much contribution as I possibly can. So now what I'm going to do is work out uh, how many then of each type of mattress uh, the company should make. And so I'm going to have two more rows here. I'm going to have the production in units and then I'm going to keep a record of the labor hours that are being used. So we know there are 32,000 labor hours available and we're going to start then. We've ranked comfort first. So we're going to start by making the comfort. And so let's do some workings. So if we look at the comfort, according to the table we were given, the annual demand for the comfort is 3,800 units. So if that's their expected level of sales, ideally they want to make 3,800 of these comfort mattresses. As long as it takes to make one in labour hours, the thing that's scarce, three and a half hours. So if I do some working, here we go. So the comfort, 3,800 units multiplied by three and a half hours, it will take 13,300 hours to make all of the comforts in order to meet the demand. Well, I can do that because we've got 32,000 labour hours available. That's all right then. So production, back to my statement, I'm going to make all 3,800 of the uh, comforts and that's going to use up 13,300 of these um, precious labour hours. What I need to be doing is keeping track of how many labour hours I've got left. So back in my working box, we know we have 32,000 hours to begin with, but we're going to use 13,300 making the comforts. So now I've got 18,700 um, hours left that I can use. Going back to my rank order, we'd like to make the deluxe next because that has the second highest contribution per labor hour. Look at the table. The demand for the deluxe is expected to be 2,700 units and they take four hours each to make. So I'm going to think, well, how long would that take to do? So another working. So the deluxe, 2,700 units multiplied by four hours. That will take 10,800 hours. Well, I've just worked out we've got 18,700 hours left, so I can do it. So that's great then. So in my statement, the number of deluxe mattresses we're going to make is going to be 2,700, and that's going to use up 10,800 labor hours. So, so far, looking good, we've managed to uh, meet the demand for all of the comforts and all of the deluxe whilst maximizing our contribution. So these are the questions. Inevitably, what should happen um, is that somewhere along the way, the, the uh, scarce resource will run out. So it looks like we're going to have a problem with the standard, but let's see. So the standard then, um, let's see how many of these we can make. Have another quick tally in the workings, see how many hours we've got left. So we did have 18,700, but we're going to use 10,800 making the deluxe. So now I've only got 7,900 labor hours remaining. If I look back at the table, the demand for the standard is five and a half thousand units and they take two and a half hours each to make. So five and a half thousand units multiplied by two and a half hours would take 13,750 hours. Well, I can't do it. We've only got 7,900 hours left. So all we can do then is make optimum use of what's left and use that 7,900 hours um, making as many standards as we can until we've run out of hours. So I'm just going to reverse the formula slightly and I'm going to take the 7,900 labor hours that we've got available. I'm going to divide that by the two and a half uh, labor hours it takes to make a standard. And that tells me we can make 3,160 units of the standard mattress. If that came up at a decimal, I would need to round it down because physically I, I don't have any more labor hours than what uh, was set in the question. So the production in units of the standard, let's put this in my statement, 
we're going to make 3,160 of the standard mattress. And in this case, that's going to use up the remaining 7,900 hours. OK, where does that leave me then? So we now know how many of each unit of each mattress we're going to make. And we've worked out the, the uh, most optimum way to use these labor hours. And the question, if I just go back to the question, it said prepare a contribution statement showing the maximum profit achievable given the limited labor hours available. So we've worked out the optimum production plan, but I haven't actually finished the answer because I haven't given them the maximum profit achievable. So what I'm now going to do, I'm going to calculate the total contribution that each mattress will give me in this final row. And just make sure we're using the right figures here. So if I look at the deluxe, we've established that we're going the level of production is going to be 2,700 units of deluxe. And per unit, the contribution of a deluxe is 148 pounds. So let me get a working box. Here we go. So for the deluxe one, 148 pounds of contribution per mattress multiplied by 2,700 deluxe mattresses. That means the deluxe will bring in, will generate 399,600 pounds of contribution. Then do the same for the comfort. So the contribution per unit of a comfort is 147 pounds. The number of units we're going to produce is 3,800. So that's going to bring in um, 558, 600 pounds worth of contribution. And then lastly, the standard, the contribution per unit, 75 pounds. Labour hours used, uh, not labour hours used, sorry, production in units 3160, so 75 pound multiplied by 3160 will bring in or yield 237,000 pounds of contribution. And then hopefully you know that contribution um, goes towards paying the fixed costs and then any that's remaining becomes profit. So my final calculation then um, is simply to look at the fixed costs and work out the profit. And here we go. I've just moved my table up because uh, I couldn't quite fit it all on the same um, slide. So, but you can see I've kept there the final row of the table, the total contributions from each um, mattress. So I'm now going to add up all of those contributions to get an overall total contribution for the company. So 399600, add the 558, add the 237. So if they manufacture and sell all of the mattresses according to our plan, it will bring in one million one hundred ninety five thousand two hundred pounds of contribution and as we say that contribution goes first towards paying the fixed costs and then any remaining becomes profit and if i look back over on the left hand side we were told the fixed overheads are nine hundred and fifty thousand pounds per annum so my last calculation then is to take this contribution this 1.195 million take away the fixed costs of 950,000 and then that brings me to the the answer that if they follow this plan it will generate a profit of 245,200 pounds and that is the maximum profit that is achievable whilst making the best the most optimum use of the labor hours that they have available just another thing just to consider with this topic what we've done here is just purely considered this financially and so this helps managers make a financial uh, decision, but it doesn't consider any non-financial factors. So, for example, um, the standard mattress might be it might be that um, it's what the company is most known for. It might be what their whole reputation was built on. So by not now making enough of the standards, um, that could cause some damage to their brand reputation. Or it might be the standard mattress um, has the most co uh, competition. And so by not making all of the standard mattresses, they might now lose some market share because customers might move elsewhere. Um, so just when you're analysing things, there are always going to be non-financial factors to consider um, as well. And that completes another video then of accounting with Mr H. Um, hope you found it useful. Please, please do remember to subscribe, like, share, comment below what you found useful and what you'd like to see in future videos.